A large storm will bring even more severe weather to the United States both today and tomorrow with more damaging winds, large to very large hail, and a few tornadoes being possible anywhere from the central plains all the way back over into the Ohio Valley and Northeast. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down everything that you need to know about this severe weather event over the next couple of days and what we can expect as we get closer to the 4th of July. Let's begin though with what's happening across the United States as of earlier this morning and the weather was pretty crazy crazy last night, especially back over in the Northern Plains, where we actually had damaging wind gusts that were as high as 90 miles per hour, and we had a large swath of wind move across South and North Dakota, and even parts of Montana. We did end up having a couple of brief tornadoes yesterday, but luckily nothing too significant or too robust compared to what we've had in the past. Overall, this system will continue to bring some showers and thunderstorms to areas in the Midwest this morning, and eventually, we are going to see some redevelopment with some severe weather later today but luckily the risk does look lower over in those areas. Back over in the Central Plains, we had a large explosion of thunderstorms late last night and that actually ended up bringing some damaging winds to areas like western Oklahoma and southern Kansas. Just lots of rumbles of thunder though, lots of light shows in those areas as well, with frequent lightning actually happening overnight last night. Now across the East Coast, things look dry for the time being, but I will have to say that it's not going to remain that way, at least for the Northeast, as we get closer to late tomorrow as showers will return and even some severe weather will return to some of those areas. Now, over in the tropics, things are actually getting a little bit interesting. We do have a couple of tropical waves right now just east of the Lesser Antilles, and Invest 95 is likely to become a tropical storm over the next couple of days and crash into the Lesser Antilles, where we could actually see this become a hurricane. Now, after this, it becomes very questionable what this will do, but I do think it'll become a hurricane sometime here in the Caribbean Sea, maybe even just before it hits the Lesser Antilles. I think it's more than likely going to crash into parts of Mexico, maybe somewhere in Central America. It also could go towards the Gulf of Mexico, but I would give that like a 15 to 20% chance of happening. I would give this more of an 80% chance of happening overall right now. So not an imminent concern to the United States, but if this does become more of a threat or something that grows into more of a concern, we will talk more about it in a future forecast. But for now, would not be concerned if you're in the United States. And even if it was a concern, we are still well over seven days out. So no need to be concerned right now. And in terms of the severe weather threat for the next several days, we're going to begin with flying fences Friday, which is today. We do have a large marginal and slight risk for severe weather. Your slight risk goes across parts of Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, Kansas, and even into Colorado, where the greatest confidence is right now for severe weather, including damaging winds, which could be significant at times, large to very large hail, and even a few tornadoes are possible. A marginal threat of severe weather in place back over into parts of the Midwest and even back over into Utah, where there could be some isolated hail and wind later today. Now, here's the wind concern for today. We're really going to be focusing on parts of Kansas, Nebraska, and Colorado for this wind threat, but it's not the same for all the other threats, so just stay tuned if you're back over to the east, because this is where we're going to be watching for the most significant threat for damaging winds upwards of 80 miles per hour, so make sure that you're hatching down trampolines and protecting loose lawn items. The hail risk for today is going to be concentrated in the same exact area where we could see some hailstones up to the size of baseballs, which is 2.75 inches in diameter, so protect vehicles if you can. Now, the tornado risk is a little bit different. We actually have a more conditional 5% tornado risk back over near Kansas City where we could see a couple or even a few tornadoes. Now, this is again conditional, meaning it may or may not happen. But if you're in this area, make sure that you have a tornado action plan in place for this afternoon and through the early evening. We could still see an isolated tornado outside of this anywhere in Nebraska, Colorado, Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, and even back over into parts of Minnesota and Wisconsin, we could end up seeing an isolated tornado. We'll talk more about Friday in just a second, but once we go into Saturday, this threat will begin to move more to the east and a little bit further down to the south as we have another large risk for severe weather anywhere from the northeast and the Ohio Valley back into parts of the central and southern plains where more damaging winds and hail will be possible and also that slight risk will be more elevated for both the wind threat and as well as the tornado risk, which we'll talk about in just a second. But again, the yellow shaded area is where the greatest confidence is right now for some damaging winds up to 70 miles per hour for Saturday. The hail risk overall pretty low across the board, but there could be some isolated hail up to the size of maybe ping pong balls over in parts of the Ohio Valley, and then a much more modest threat even back over in the central and southern plains, but I wouldn't rule out an isolated storm there up to golf ball sized hail or maybe even up to two inches in diameter. And then the tornado risk for tomorrow is going to be more concentrated across the Ohio Valley and northeast, and notice again, another 5% tornado risk for Ohio, Pennsylvania, and extreme southwestern New York. Overall, again, there will be a potential 
for maybe a couple or a few tornadoes it's not super concerning because we're not really going to be talking i don't think at least about strong tornadoes but if you're in this area be prepared because we could end up seeing maybe a tornado or two and have a tornado action plan in place if it does look more concerning by tomorrow we'll probably schedule a live stream for this one so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel now today's tornado risk compared to yesterday is actually a bit more favorable for tornadoes we actually could see a few tornadoes but again the question mark is will storms fire but the hodographs for today do show a very curved atmosphere meaning that we have a lot of spin as we go from the ground layer all the way up to the troposphere and this is where we're going to be looking at for the greatest concentration for a tornado risk if storms do get going notice these curved hodographs that does represent more spin meaning that in this particular environment in that little five percent tornado risk that is where we're gonna have the greatest potential for a few tornadoes now that's again if storms develop so will they develop well let me go through the future radar for you and give you an idea of if they will or won't develop this is what it looks like for today so showers continue this morning this will stabilize the atmosphere probably all the way through about lunchtime and maybe even a little bit after that and depending on how long the shower activity stays afloat that'll kind of determine if storms actually fire now if they do fire which the hrr model run at zero zero z does show them firing this would be mostly a hail and wind threat but it also could end up producing a couple of tornadoes for any storms that are discrete in this environment and i would expect storms to fire up around four to five o'clock if they do fire the latest being around six or seven now as they continue to move east they'll eventually move into parts of missouri where this will be more of a wind concern and then after sunset daylight heating takes over or really ends i should say and then it'll eventually turn into more of just some isolated damaging winds and hail the severe weather risk for areas like st louis would be pretty low in this sort of instance now there's a chance that these don't fire i would say right now it's about a 60 percent chance storms do fire 40 percent chance they don't fire but if they don't fire at all they're probably not going to fire at all if they fire up they're going to fire up and there's going to be plenty of them so that's kind of the situation that we'll be in today but overall again isolated to scattered storms are expected in this area if they get going now another concern to watch for will be back out to the west where we could see a mesoscale convective system develop here this will be mostly a wind concern across colorado parts of southern nebraska and northwestern kansas how long this lasts will kind of depend on how long these storms go for and if they actually develop if this line of storms develops and this area of storms is ongoing this line will probably weaken before getting to kansas city but if those storms do not fire i would not be shocked if that line of storms gets closer to kansas city so a bit of a complicated forecast but that's what we'd be looking at for today midwest a little bit less complicated because we'll have a lot of convection out there this morning that's going to stabilize the atmosphere by quite a bit and eventually this afternoon some storms will try to fire up an environment that is already going to be used up from the morning convection so a lot of this will just be isolated hail and wind i wouldn't rule out though an isolated tornado especially back over here in parts of iowa if we do end up getting a couple storms that go over in an environment that's not really used up by the convection from the morning so that'll be something to watch for but overall the risk again still will remain low for today and eventually this evening showers move across chicago i don't think we're going to see any severe weather near the lake so if you're right in this area like milwaukee or back over in green bay or even chicago i just don't think the risk for severe weather overall is going to really exist if, if there is any severe weather just some isolated damaging winds here's the tornado risk for tomorrow notice again tornado parameter values are actually going to be pretty low overall but they'll exist basically all morning and all afternoon so we could end up seeing an isolated tornado or two basically at any point during saturday across much of the ohio valley so during the morning storms will move through during the morning and these storms will be mostly linear wouldn't rule out an isolated tornado or two out of this activity it should be a pretty brief and weak threat but it's something to watch for for the morning saturday by the afternoon these storms continue to move east and any storms that redevelop along that line that are semi-discrete or discrete will have a better shot at producing another tornado or two across parts of ohio west virginia and pennsylvania notice the h triple r model showing a couple more discrete super cells in parts of southwestern pennsylvania which just got three tornadoes the other day from that little line of storms that went through so there might be another one or two back over in that area eventually these will probably become more wind threats as they move towards maryland and also eventually towards delaware and new jersey and even southeast pennsylvania could still have a brief tornado threat but i think the risk is going to be a bit lower so overall saturday mostly a morning risk and also afternoon risk the evening looks a little bit drier and also a little bit calmer for most areas now beyond today we're going to continue to watch for a very active weather pattern there will be a large ridge in the southern tier of the country keeping things warm and dry but the jet stream will stay meridional meaning that we're going to continue to see a lot of curvature in the jet stream which allows for more of these large troughs to move across the northern tier of the country by next week we're going to have another one of these across parts of the midwest and that could bring even more severe weather something more organized as possible as we go into next weekend but
but that does remain a bit more uncertain. And eventually by the middle of the month, we could get another large storm. But again, this stuff like this is just so uncertain as we are still well over seven days out. So something to watch for, but again, just too far out to really tell what's going to happen there. So in terms of what's expected over the next few days, we'll continue to watch for surface high pressure system that'll start to build in into parts of the Midwest and the Northern Plains for the weekend. But once we get past Sunday, it's going to break loose again with another large trough across parts of the Northern and Central Plains and the Midwest, where another round of severe weather will be possible on Monday. So be ready for that. And eventually, as we go into Tuesday, this threat of severe weather will start to move across the Midwest again by Wednesday, which is just the day before the 4th of July. It looks to be somewhat active in some areas, but overall, no really organized severe weather risk by the looks of it right now, at least for Wednesday. But that could obviously change. Once we go into Thursday, it looks like for the 4th of July, we could have some showers and thunderstorms across a narrow area from the Ohio Valley back into the Central Plains where more damaging winds hail and maybe an isolated tornado somewhere in there will be possible. After that, things are really uncertain. And even the 4th of July, some things still remain uncertain for the severe weather. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and we'll keep you posted with the latest.